So I know some people just started filtering in. Um, so for the new people, hi, my name is Carrie Scono. Again, I work, I've been working at Kroger for the past two years and just recently got into VUE. And uh, this is going to be kind of a workshop code with me sort of thing. Um, so feel free to follow along. Uh, this link at the bottom of the slide uh, is a link to a code pen article that just kind of has all the pens that we're going to be working through together today. So, yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, cool. So frameworks, right? That's uh, the hot topic right now. Um, everybody has a favorite one. Uh, they don't usually, I don't know, they're not really all that similar. Um, but some of them borrow from other frameworks. And one thing I like about Vue is that you'll see a lot of really familiar practices because it is kind of a late bloomer. Um, so I'm just going to kind of highlight some of the, the, the topics of some other pretty popular frameworks. And then we'll talk about how Vue is, is similar or different from that. So the first one is Angular 1x. Um, I specified 1x here because that's um, what I'm comfortable with. I haven't really used Angular 2, and I've, I've read that they've changed a lot of the API and structure. Um, you'll notice there's a, a dog wearing a shower cap here. Uh, it's because I did not have a stick figure for this slide, and my friend Izzy was nice enough to loan me a picture of her dog. Yay. So Angular 1 uh, is MVVM, or MV star, which means that it's pretty opinionated about app, its application structure. But it does provide some really awesome built-in directives and little pieces of functionality that you can add into uh, your templates, uh, which is where you would add your HTML. I feel like I'm really loud right now. Is that, you, is, am I super loud? Or, OK, OK, sorry. Scary. <laughs> Um, and so it leverages templates, which is where it stores its HTML. Um, and Angular is really popular because of a couple things, and that is its dependency injection and its two-way data binding made possible by the digest loop. A React, on the other hand, is view only. It's state agnostic, so it's not really all that opinionated about your application. It leverages a virtual DOM, which means that it's got pretty quick renders. Um, it has one-way data binding. And the most, the, I think the most popular parts about React are the fact that it's, it's, it's componentization, so it's composable. And then the re, you can use JSX and render methods, which means you're basically writing HTML. That's not really HTML, it's just JavaScript. And I think that's the big draw to React, is the fact that in the end it's just JavaScript. So Vue, is also, like React, it's view only. It leverages a virtual DOM. Uh, but like Angular, it also uses templates that leverage actual HTML and CSS. And it also has some powerful built-in directives. And finally, it's based on the web component spec, so you'll see some of that sprinkled in here and there. Cool, so let's just go ahead and start coding. Um, so if you haven't navigated to this URL, or don't want to, no big deal. All right, so we're just going to start off with some basic app creation. And this is kind of, this walkthrough is going to be kind of high level and very introductory sort of thing. There's just so much about this framework that I can really not cover in, in like a 45 minute session. So we'll just start here. So the first thing we want to do when we're making a view app is that we want to initialize the view instance. Call const app new view. And what we pass into this view instance is an object full of properties, and they're all special properties. And I like to, I like to call them options because all of them are optional, and it just kind of it makes me happy to say that. <laughs> So up here we have some HTML that just sort of lays out our application. As, as we uh, go through, you'll notice that I'm using all of these weird looking classes. Um, I've kind of really gotten into functional CSS, so they're there to just make things look nice and so I don't have to do CSS in front of you guys, which would just be embarrassing. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna mount our application, and we do that by using the property called L. 
and we give it an element, a selector. So I think we, what we want to do is we want to mount it here at the ID of app. So what that's going to do is that's going to say, hey, this guy and this guy, everything between here is now our view app. And you'll see it didn't replace any of the HTML yet because we just haven't done anything with it just yet. But we can add some data in there. And at the view instance level, the data can be an object. Once we start getting into components, it takes a, a, a factory function. And I'll kind of ex go into that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and add a message. Hello, view. And then to use that in our HTML up here, all we really have to do is wrap it in handlebars. And there we have it. So we can add, the great thing about view is that we can just add a script tag to the top of our HTML page and boom, we can start creating a view application. But we can also, instead of doing, instead of doing that, we can also add templates. And there are two different ways to add templates, uh, really. The first is to add it as an inline string. Let's go ahead and add our message in here again. It's not great. Let's make that bigger. Cool. And you'll notice that it ripped out everything between these two main tags and just replaced it with what we have in our template. Another way we can add templates is by using script tags in our HTML. The type here is text x template x dash template. And we'll want to give it an ID so we can reference it later. Let's call it template. And down here, we can just reference it the same way we did with L. Let's go ahead and add something to our template so it's not just blink. And again, make it bigger. There we go. So we grabbed our template from a different place. Awesome. So we just created our first view application. It's super simple. Um, let's go ahead and get into something a little bit more complicated. Let's leave. All right, so let's do this one first. So our next example is going to be a little bit more complicated. And before I get into it, I kind of want to cover something that React does very well, which is it gives you hooks into its life cycle as it mounts and unmounts components and as it updates things. View does the same thing. I kind of gave this as an illustration as to, OK, good, it looks big. Um, as an illustration, so you can see kind of how it how it goes along. Um, this is an actual view app. I've hooked into a life the lifecycle methods, and you can see it is actually triggering some events as it, gets, as it goes along. And I can trigger more events and see that before update and updated. So the before create and create are during the initialization of the view instance or component. The created comes after all of the data and sorry, all of the, the data and methods have been mounted properly. And mounted finally gets called when your element is is mounted into your HTML and the template has been compiled. Like I said, our next example is gonna be a little bit more complex. I figured what better way to display the functionality of view than by making an application that fetches data, displays data, and mutates the, or, and sort of messes around with the data. So I was lucky enough to find a Ron Swanson quote API. If you guys don't know who Ron Swanson is, he's a character on Parks and Recreation, and he's pretty wonderful. Um, and so let's kind of go over what I have set up here. You can see, let me see, now you can see. You can see right here, I have some basic HTML laid out, but our application actually doesn't get mounted until here. And we have a template I've already outlined. It's in here. It's got this form with a select and a button, and then this UL that displays some data, which right now is just an empty array. 
So that's all our application is right now. So let's go ahead and add a method that goes ahead and, and fetches from our API. And we do that by adding the methods property. It takes an object, and we'll call this one search. And you'll notice I used the full declaration, the full function declaration, and that's because if you try to use arrow functions, you'll mess up this context, which is automatically bound to the view instance or the component. So steer clear of arrow functions when you're trying to use these methods. All right, and luckily, because the demo gods are very cruel, I went ahead and I set up a search function already, and I can just copy and paste, because that is so much better. All right, so we have our search, but now we need a way to actually populate this quote array, right? We have this function sitting out there. It's not really doing anything. So let's go ahead and use one of our lifecycle hooks, mounted. And that just, it stays outside of the methods object and just kind of lives directly as a property of the view instance. Just go ahead and do this. Mounted, and then on mount, let's go ahead and this dot search. There we go. And you can see we're starting to pull quotes. So it's kind of frustrating. Right now we have this form and it's not really doing anything. So let's, we can go ahead and hide these things. Um, we can do that by using v show. Oops. Well, that's not what I wanted. And I'll go ahead and add the show. All right. And what this is going to do is this is really, the show is just really going to add a display none to both of these elements. If we really want to remove them from the DOM, like in Angular, the difference between show and if is that if will remove it from the DOM. and show just uses that display property. So we have both of these sibling elements that we want to hide. And it's kind, of, it's kind of a bummer that we have to add this vif onto both of them. I mean, what if we had like eight form components? That would be really frustrating. So what we can do is we can add this, we can add a template and surround it with a template. And I'll go ahead and fix that, there we go. And we can add our vif to the template instead. So if I have VF of true, then everything renders, and VF of false, and it's all hidden. The nice thing about templates is that when you actually look at the rendered DOM, they are not there. So while in React 15, all the doggies, so cute. Um, in React 15, you had to wrap things in a div or something, and uh, you ended up with a crazy amount of divs in your DOM. Here, we just wrap it in a template, and that template disappears. All right, so let's go ahead and fetch more than one quote. I'm just gonna update my search function to default my selected to five. Or I guess I can, instead of doing that, let's go ahead and put it in here. We'll fetch five, look at this, cool. So you can see we have our array, it's getting much longer, it's not really nice to look at, so we'll go ahead and uh, display it nicer. <laughs> and we can do that with v4. So we have our quote array, we can do v4 quote and quote array. And then we can just wrap it. Yeah. Now we have a really quick way to just display all of those quotes. Excellent. And another thing about this V4 is it's, it can actually be, or it can actually give you more than one parameter. You can also get the index of the quote. So if we want to do the index, we can do that. 
So now we have all the indices there. So if you, any of you know about Ron Swanson, you know he's a very terse man. I uh, probably would not like to say more than five words. Uh, so the fact that we're pulling five quotes here is probably not his style. So let's go ahead and find the index of the shortest quote and just display that. So I have this method here, um, index of shortest. And we were going to want to add that to our data, but we want it to update every time we fetch new data. So what we can do is we can add a computed property. And it lives in the computed object. Sorry, things are just going crazy here. All right. I'll call this shortest. And it's just a function which returns. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I just need the name. There we go. Index of shortest. And then we just need to pass in our, our quote array. Excellent. So now we can, oh, I'm sorry. Oof. Now we can go up here into our template and we can say, all right, I have an index and I know the index of the shortest quote. So let's only display that one. So I'm going to go the if index shortest shortest dot index. And we should get the index of the index of the shortest, or the, the quote that is the shortest. Excellent. All right, so we can fetch more than one quote just by adding it here, but what if we want to use those form inputs? Because they're there for a reason. Let's get rid of our template that's hiding it. And bring it all back. So the first thing we'll do is why don't we go ahead and try to fetch new quotes on click of this button. So view has a v on click directive. And this can be v on, and it can listen for any event, really. So you know, key, key press, key up, key down, that kind of thing. And then we'll go ahead and just call search from here. So now every time we click this button, it fetches a new quote. And you'll notice right now it's reloading the frame. And that's because I have it as type of submit. And that's to illustrate um, these modifiers that you can add on to our, 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 um, our click handlers, or really any V on. So the one that we want is prevent default. So I'm going to add dot prevent, and that should prevent it from reloading. So now it's not reloading the frame anymore. We can also add other modifiers. So if we want um, it's, I think it's key up, maybe. And key up, and we'll go ahead and search here too. And we'll do some weird ones like the down arrow. So when we have this selected and we hit the down arrow, you can't see it, but trust me, I'm hitting the down arrow. It's searching. All right, let's go ahead and use a select. And here I've already had this populate options function. So we can just go ahead and add that as options to our data. Excellent. And then to get all those options in our select box, we'll go ahead and add them here. We can use our V4 again. V4 option in options. And here we're going to use bind, V bind, which is going to bind uh, our value to the value in the data. Value option dot value. And then in here, we'll just go ahead and use option dot uh, text. So 
so you should see now our, our dropdown is populated. So we need a way to get this, these values to our search function. So we'll go ahead and use a vModel this time. And vModel provides two-way data binding, which can handle kind of your edge cases. Selected. We'll see. And then in here, we'll go ahead and add selected and default it to one. All selected. We should see. We can fetch more quotes. Um, let me take off this guy, this V if, and that way we can see all the quotes that are coming back. It would be easier if I actually passed, used selected somewhere, right? This dot selected. I can pass that into our search function. All right, now we got it. All right, so fetch four quotes, fetch seven quotes. Excellent. So this is kind of just a, a basic fetch data, display data, mess with data sort of application. Um, we can go on to maybe one more um, that kind of demonstrates the composability of view. Um, so typically you'll have a parent passing down props to the child and the child will emit events back up to the parent and that's kind of typical of like an Angular application really. But we'll see it here. All right, excellent. So <laughs> I've chosen a couple of things to, to be components for us. Uh, one of them is one that is very near and dear to my heart, the modal, mostly because it's something that we all have to do that's not necessarily <laughs> accessibility friendly. Um, but I think it's nice and clean in view. All right, so you'll notice first that this button right here has a lot of classes. Like I said, I like to use the uh, functional CSS. And it's probably, it's, it's probable that you'll want to use the same kind of button, the same kind of styles throughout your application. So we'll probably want to make that an, um, a component as well. So there are two ways to register a component to your view instance. The first one is by doing it globally, and you do that by attaching it directly to view with dot .component. And this guy takes two properties, and we'll just call this my button. We'll start with the button. And the, the first, sorry, the first parameter is the name of your component, and the second one is that list of options again. And we'll probably want to give it a template. And since this isn't an instance, we don't need to give it an L or a mounting point. And I already have a template defined up there. I'll go ahead and just kind of steal this guy and put it into our template. Awesome. And since we've registered it globally, we should be able to just use it directly into our application, and you'll see the button came back. So what if we want to add some data to this button? Our metrics team says we want to see absolutely every time that this button is pressed. Well, in a component, like I said before, sorry, takes a function as the, the data parameter, oh my goodness, sorry, the data property, and that returns a new object. Um, and this is because we're going to have multiple buttons and we don't want them all to share the same state. We want them to have their own individual state. It wouldn't do if we had five buttons on the page and they all incremented at the same time every time a different button was pressed. All right, so we'll do this. And then we can add an on-click handler to this button. And to shorten it, we can actually shorten V on to just the at sign and use at click. And here, I'll just increment the count. And 
here we can display that count. There we go. So now every time we click it, we're incrementing that count. But chances are we're not always gonna want our button to say open modal. So what we, we can do is we can add slots, which are part of the web component spec. And we can default this. Or if we put something in between our button, my button tags, like open modal, it should switch that out. All right. So we don't want the button to be in control of what it clicks. Let's go ahead and add a handler. Click handler. And we'll use this to increment count. And we'll also want to tell the parent that we've been clicked. So here, instead of just incrementing the count, let's use the click handler. Awesome. Let's, so let's go ahead and create our modal. I'm just gonna do this really quickly. Uh, modal overlay, div dot modal body. And go ahead and add a new button here. And because it's registered globally, we can do that. And then we're gonna wanna set up our second component, which is the modal. And we can do this the second way, which is by just identifying the options we wanna use in an object. Template, come on, modal. And then, shouldn't have any data. Let's just do that for now. All right. And then we want to register this modal with our view instance. So I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to do that by using the components pr um, property, which takes an object of components. We'll call this my modal. And then we should be able to just use it directly inside of here. There we go. So this is great. We have this my button. It's defaulted to the default slot text, and it doesn't do anything, so that's not, that's not great. So I've provided this open modal and close modal, which just toggles this dot show. And we can go ahead and start using that. So let's do a v if show, and in here when we do my button, let's call this close. We wanna give it something to do when you click it. So let's go back to our modal, and give it a method. And we'll do this, emit, and let the parent know that we want to close. It's on click. So up here in our parent, we're going to want to watch for that action. So on close, we can close modal, which is what we've called it in here. And on click of this button, we can open level. All right, now, if I've done everything right, hopefully, this will open and this will close. We've created a modal. So another really nice thing is that we can pass in props to the child. So let's go ahead and add some props to the modal. Let's call it the title. We can go ahead and use title in here. And up here in our parent, let's go ahead and bind. And vbind also has a shortcut, which is just the colon. We want to bind title, which is the property for my modal. 
And let's bind it to message, which I believe we still have somewhere. So now if we open up our modal, we see hello view. All right, excellent. So the last thing I'm really gonna show you with this guy, and then we'll see if you guys wanna mess around with your own uh, view applications, is I wanna show you the transitions. Because most of the time, like in React, we have to include a third-party template in order to do some sweet transitions. But with view, we can just add transition and wrap it around the thing that we want to transition. And it'll automatically get a set of classes attached to it as it enters and leaves the DOM. Yeah. Oh, let's go ahead and give it a name, though. Transition name is modal. So the classes that it'll attach are at the beginning, it'll attach um, the name of your transition dash enter. And as it progresses through adding to the DOM, it'll also add, again, the name of your transition dash enter active. And then when it leaves, it'll add dash leave active and then dash leave. So let's focus first on uh, the entering and leave active because that's kind of gonna kind of define the styles that we're gonna get right in the beginning as we've added it to the DOM and then we're gonna transition in. And then right as we leave, we're gonna specify the, the properties that we're gonna transition to. So let's just set the opacity to zero and see how that transitions. Yeah, so we've got a pretty nice transition already. And since it's just CSS, we can even add it to the nested classes on enter and leave. So enter, let's just grab the modal body. Let's make it do something kind of fun. Scale <coughs> it in, maybe not two. And then maybe when it leaves, modal leave active, modal body. Transform, uh, let's rotate this. How about 360? Get it to spin out. There it goes. Awesome. So we've been able to add some extra trans transitions in there too. So that's super fun. All right, so I'm just gonna go through some slides really quick at the end, and then I have kind of a, an activity if we have time for people if you wanna keep on chugging. Um, so Vue comes with its own CLI, which is kind of like Create React App. All you really have to do is download it and run Vue in it, and then your favorite template and your project name. Um, I generated my slides that I'm using today using this. Um, this is just one big Vue app, it's sort of fun. And these are some of the templates that they provide. Um, simple is just giving you an HTML file, basically. <laughs> the core libra libraries of Vue are Vue, uh, Vuex, Vue Router, and Vue Server Renderer. Uh, Vuex is super nice because unlike Redux, it knows that you are in a Vue app. So it's optimized for Vue. Uh, finally, some additional resources are basically just from the VIEW website. Uh, the guide will kind of step you through things that I've done today, and the API has all of your optional properties out there and some pretty cool extra stuff. Um, so now I can take questions, or uh, we can go in and do maybe an additional activity, or do, what do we have time for? I have a question. Oh, okay, or a question, yeah. Uh, I noticed you using Slide, and you mentioned that's part of the web components, but yeah. that made me curious if view components have any relationship between custom elements or the web components spec beyond that, or if you could be uh, next time, sorry. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I've never used Vue with 
with web components at all. Um, so I'm not entirely sure, but I assume that they play well together um, just based on how they were made. Um, and Vue really is just drop in and go. So. Any other questions? Do you guys want to just kind of practice on your own? Because I have a, a, my last pen here is just kind of a set of requirements, and it's just an empty pen, and uh, it asks you to create an ugly calculator using kind of what you've learned. So it's kind of up to you if you want to keep going. Um, and I'll be here if you have questions still. But. So thanks for listening. <laughs>